Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Divine Day Boo. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. The 11th of the 11th. 11-11 everyone is a portal. It's a portal onto other realms, new openings, fated, fated energies and we're just before a uh, eclipse season where we've got two consecutive eclipses ahead of us what's going on what's going on on this 11th day of the 11th month of 2021 remember the portal opens onto new horizons new situations it can also speak to a choice whether we will step into this open portal this change that humanity needs to and is going through. Um, for me, 11 is, uh, it's fated, it's an opening, it's connected to spirit, connected to the divine. Um, happy birthday, if it is your birthday today, very important date. Let's see what's going on, Archangels. Please guide me. What's going on? What are the energies that will be playing out from here on out? And not this is not only a reading for today, everyone. It is a message for the times we are moving through. Let's see. 11.11. What does Spirit want us to know? So there's something to do with justice, something to do with generosity, Receiving, receiving or giving, it will be different for each of us. Um, the Hierophant, Taurus. So we've got Libra, Taurus here. Taurus can speak to what it is that we believe. It's, you know, holding on to the faith or Taurus does speak to chances, a second chance or another opportunity to find a solution or to a problem, to resolve something. Remember, Taurus is where the eclipse, the full moon, is taking place on the 19th. So it is very relevant. Taurus, uh, the Hierophant, can speak to spirituality, to our highest calling, following something that we've believed in. Okay, this can speak to... Um, our commitments, family, traditions. There are changes and there is the justice card. Number 11. Absolutely, absolutely. So Libra, Taurus, both Venus ruled signs, everyone. So this has got to do either with money for some of you, for your values. Um, Venus does speak to love. What is it that we love? What is it that makes us feel good feels we feel happy and safe and secure we feel protected we feel that we are nurtured that we are abundant okay there is the portal that is open after changes remember that uh, Taurus speaking of religion can also speak to dogmatic ideas so ideas that um, we have um, grown through Okay, things that we've grown up from, um, following traditions. Maybe it's a time to look at things from a different uh, perspective. Maybe it's time that we need to let go of old, outworn beliefs or relationships or situations. Remember, the South Node is in Sagittarius, which does speak to freedom. It speaks to truth, justice. That is what we need to get uncomfortable from. Move away from that. North Node in Gemini. Make a decision. Maybe even do some research. Learn because there's we're going through a learning curve. The whole of humanity. And of course it can speak to others on a more of a personal uh, level. Remember that justice does uh, speak to karma. It speaks to balance and harmony. What is it that we love? Venus is now in Capricorn. It's we're heading to a very important time for love relationships. 
Venus is going to be at the fore in 2022. I will be talking to you about that more as time goes. We've got the Four of Wands, which does speak to marriage. It could speak to, for me, it can speak to a commitment. Whatever we've committed to, does it give us, you know, happiness? Do we celebrate? Do we feel uh, stable? Okay, this could also speak to what it is that you're working on. Okay, what it is that we desire. There's a sense of stability. Remember that the Four of Wands does speak to the Emperor as well taking charge, being in, you know, at the top of one's game, um, making sure that there's leadership, that someone holds the fort for those that are beneath, those that are waiting, you know, for a certain uh, protection. Is it a, a leader? Is it speaking on a cosmic level? Is it a leader of a country? Is it the leader of your life? Is it the person that is at the top um, of the stairs? Someone that you take orders from? Could be a boss, could be, could be someone that's quite knowledgeable. Remember the uh, Hierophant does speak to great knowledge and wisdom. Ace of Swords, victory, success, truth. The potential for new beginnings, whatever it is that did not provide us with security, happiness, whatever changes we are dealing with, it's all about standing in our truth. It's all about having the truth, knowing the truth, coming to terms with something. This could also speak to someone going through divorce, okay? Severing ties where there hasn't been equal giving and receiving, there hasn't been harmony. So our harmony is sort of challenged because we've got a six here, six of pentacles, and we've got Libra, which the law comes um, to mind as well. So has there been justice? Has there been truth? Because Libra is all about balance, harmony. We've got a six of pentacles with the scales here, two Libra energies, and in between is our ideas, our beliefs, our what is it that, you know, we're trying to stick to, um, hold on to, something that maybe needs to change. That's why we're having a full moon in Taurus. Taurus is fixed earth. It does not like change. But Uranus transiting through Taurus is going to bring those radical, unexpected tower moments. What is the potential outcome We've got the Two of Swords. There's that decision that I was talking about, the decision, the Gemini North Node. Um, Libra is also, remember, the glyph of Libra. It's two sides. It's the scales. It's uh, what do I do? Libra is the peacemaker. Do I hold the peace? Do I not unsettle a situation? Do I not cause change but has there been justice what is it that i should do and two of swords is another card it's a two and remember the two swords are very similar to the uh 11 right which is also justice um we've got also as i was talking about gemini Gemini is two, two twins. Again, it speaks, speaks very strongly to choices. So the Two of Swords speaks to someone being at odds and needing to trust their intuition. What is it that I do? Do I step through that portal? Do I take the changes, take the, um, you know, work with the energies? Or do I confront and battle and not follow my calling. I mean, this is someone who is blindfolded. They cannot see, but they need to trust their heart. Now, she is also protecting her heart. So maybe this is saying that we need to trust our heart and know that we are looked after. A decision, a decision, yeah, four of swords. I was going to say two, three, and the fourth sword is the sword of justice. So we've got another four. 
I do see someone being desperate here, being, um, I shouldn't say desperate, I should use the word despair, being in despair after some sort of a heartbreak, loss, um, disappointment. Remember the Four of Swords does come after the Three of Swords. This is in action because a decision has not been made. This is someone crying over something that went wrong in the past. He looks like he's crying over a tombstone. Um, someone after having lost someone. Okay, the Four of Swords can speak to also um, in action or someone needing to heal after heartbreak. So the warrior is not taking action at this time, more needing to heal, heal with, you know, whatever's happened in the past. So we've got seven swords, eight swords feeling blocked, but this is uh, one's own perception. Seven swords, if we count the seven swords, that is sneakiness, that is uh, robbery, that is someone having uh, done something under the surface something quite sneaky quite for some of you this could be someone that's been quite intelligent but you know whatever the intelligence was about was for their own gain seven speaks to conflict we've got a helicopter let's see what the karma dharma speaks to We've got the world card and there is Venus, everyone. So this is the end of a major cycle, even though it's very difficult. Remember, we've got the four fixed signs here. So we have uh, Scorpio Taurus, where the um, lunations of the month of November are happening. And we've got Leo and Aquarius. We know that there's been, you know, it's been a hard year with Saturn in Aquarius squaring over to Uranus in Taurus it's been happening all year and we've still got another exact square coming in December we're not out of the woods yet and what is Saturn squaring over to Uranus it's the old traditional it needs to change Uranus wants change Uranus will bring change and it will be sudden abrupt shocking for some of you it could be surprising a square is never easy in the in astrology. Let's see what the Lenormand holds for 1111. We have, yes, there it is, 22. And it is the path. Again, it does speak to choices, okay? 22 speaks to Venus in Libra. Again, Venus comes through. This speaks to opportunities that may arise as you pass, as you walk into that open portal. Make a choice. This speaks to either someone's wanting either to travel or they're uh, in two minds about separation. For some of you, you could be um, ending a marriage and, you know, this is a difficult choice. It's not easy, but it does speak to disappointments. So it can speak to hesitation. And a very vital decision that will bring uh, a point of finality. Okay, Venus is getting ready. She's in the womb. She's getting ready to be rebirthed. And that will be happening early next year. So whatever the decision is, roughly now and in the near future, it will bring a major ending. But this does speak to success as well. Okay, the Fool's journey has ended successfully as the Fool has gone through all the notions, all the lessons. This can speak to uh, literal movement, travel. We've got the book, and the book speaks to hidden information, um, knowledge. It is a futuristic card. It can speak to information, research. Matters of learning and education, but it can also speak to secrecy. So someone could be making a decision without others knowing. And there is the ship, which speaks to Jupiter and Sagittarius. Yes, there is 
transition. Yes, there is movement. Yes, there will be travel. Someone's ready to go on an adventure, on a journey. As this journey ends, there will be a restart. Okay? Someone's ready to depart or to say goodbye. Which will take them. Jupiter and Sagittarius. This speaks to someone's truths. Jupiter and Sagittarius is very powerful. The decision that is made now will bring some smooth sailing, positive changes in our lives. Remember, this is a three, and three is also it's the um, it's the Empress. It's the Empress. Three speaks to expansion and growth, and we've got a, a, the birds here, which can speak to nervousness it can speak to excitement of a new journey of waiting on someone's decision or you know the um the path can also speak to an opportunity that will open up this can speak to news uh, we see the birds building a nest somewhere else preparing there's two birds in this card in other lenormand cards there's three so it can speak to finding out about things off the grapevine um, off from other people. Let's take three fortune-telling cards. So we've got a 22 and 80 is 30, 33, and 3 is 36. That equals a 9, which is the Hermit and Virgo energies. The Hermit, remember, is one step before the Wheel of Fortune, which is the Fated Changes. So someone has been connecting to the divine, looking for information, looking for the light, soul searching. Nines always speak to endings logically. What's beneath the Four of Swords? We've got the Knight of Cups. So this is an offer, a knight bringing an offer, that Ace of Cups moving forward, which would be the Scorpio energy that we are moving through now. But they are also protecting their heart. Remember, knights wear a suit of armor. This person is very emotional. They've been through a lot, through a lot of pain. They're quite worried about moving forward, about offering this, this, uh, bringing this offer forward. Whatever this Ace of Cups is that the knight holds. 1111, what is the news? What is the information? What is the message here? We've got the expectation. She's, um, we've got a woman sitting on the inside looking out, expecting something to arise, someone to arrive. Expectation can also speak to a, a sense of pregnancy, needing to be patient, expecting someone's decision, someone's arrival, something to arrive. She does remind me very much of the Empress, well, the Empress is pregnancy, it's, you know, creating something. Um, but she's at the beginning, right? She's She doesn't look pregnant, but she is expecting. It can be a literal or a metaphorical meaning. We've got courtship, and the courtship does speak to a new, like the beginning of a new love connection or... This, on another level, can speak to an agreement, very similar to the Two of Cups, everyone. So these two are getting to know each other. She's expecting a meeting, a get-together. And we've got Judication, again, a three. A three. And there is the Justice card for me. Judication does speak to legalities. Someone is hoping for balance, harmony, maybe even expansion and growth. But, the, you know, this is like going through the red, the red tape, dealing with things that need to be done with, you know, with being on the correct side of the law. So doing things in the right way, with integrity. But because it's a three, I do feel very strongly that... It does speak to a third person, a third situation, where these two people are hoping to meet up, to come together, to agree. 
but they need to wait for the green light from from justice, from a legal situation. So the power is not within their hands. Let's say, what's at the bottom here? And we've got the pathway. So the door does open, everyone. The pathway is here. We've got the butterflies here, which speak to um, Scorpio, Plutonian energy. So changes, a death and a resurrection at some point. So we've got a 1, 5 and 3 is 8 and 8 is 16. 16, everyone, is the tower card. Um, 16 can also equal a 7, which would be the chariot. So someone taking charge, overcoming any obstacles, making sure that they're moving forward because there's scattered energy within the, uh, the chariot. Let's take one Moonology. Oracle. The Lenormand adds up to a 10, which is Jupiter and the Wheel of Fortune, which a 10 breaks down to an ace. So the decision that is made here, and there's a lot of excitement around it, right? There is transition. Someone is excited about taking a journey. Something is ending and something beginning. What's beneath the birds? There we go. There's the ring, everyone. And the ring can speak to a commitment, a marriage. It can also speak to a cycle, a karmic cycle ending. Let's see what, how we are affected emotionally. Conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse, totally on point. Thank you, Spirit. This full moon eclipse is on the axis Taurus Scorpio. Very, very relevant, right on point. So something is completing, and remember, an eclipse is a very, very potent energy. Taurus speaks to our values. It is ruled by Venus. Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. Pluto can speak to riches on a an emotional, uh, practical, deep level. Taurus and Venus, that rules Taurus, is very much about what is tangible, what do we have in our life that gives us that security? What is it that we love really? So absolutely beautiful messages, absolutely. I'd like to just take three Sabilas on the Two of Swords just to get a little bit more clarity. Someone is closing the door on the past. Okay, maybe their ideas, their beliefs are changing. They're letting go of that. For some of you, this could be you leaving some sort of a commitment that was not uh, feeding your heart, that was not feeding your soul, that was not giving you that security. And this is getting out of our comfort zone. Remember, North Node in Gemini. And the, the nodes are ready to shift and move into Taurus Scorpio. So it will be affecting the fixed signs Let's see what this Two of Swords is. What is this decision about? We've got the Bambino, which is the child. So it's concerning something new or another or a child. We've got the Dispiacere, which is like the Ace of Swords. Bittersweet energy is a new beginning which can bring tears of joy or tears of sadness. Sadness would be to those that are getting cut away, cut out of one's life. Okay, the uh, those that will be successful will have tears of joy with the decision that is made either from themselves or from someone else in their lives. And we've got the melancholy, melancholia it's called here, and she is grieving. She is grieving some sort of a loss with that five of pentacles. That can speak to financial loss or just putting something to rest. Going through the notions, having gone through difficulty here. Let's take one more card. Might take a couple more, we'll see. So there is a sense of depression and sadness here. Mourning over something to do with some loss concerning the past and it's 
uh, with the Four of Swords. That's what we see here. We have the Ace of Cups and pleasant conversations around a table. Could be concerning family. We've got the low morale. Again, someone is needing to heal. And we've got the Gran Consolación, everyone. So the Grand Consolation Prize, which says that whatever it is that someone's been focusing on or dreaming of, they've gone through many notions, ups and downs, depression, melancholy, sadness. But there has been light at the end of the tunnel here with the Ace of uh, Cups and obviously pleasant conversations with people that are your support system, you're the people that hold you up. Okay, so the Four of Swords is here again. So a lot of people are dealing with people that are literally, we have lost many people with what's been going on in the world. We have lost, many souls have left this world. Um, most of us have been touched um, through through difficult times, through losing loved ones, through, um, you know, many of us have gone through illness. You know, we've had to stay in bed with the situations as they are. But, you know, this is not only physical uh, healing that we've been going through. It's the mental side of things. It's the lack of freedom that people have been uh, trying to cope with. A lack of freedom. Remember that the ancients used to say a healthy mind leads to a healthy body. When our psych psychosis is unhealthy, it leads to unhealthy physical bodies. So make sure that you connect to people that are there to hold you up. Whether it's like-minded, loving communities as Divine Debut is. And I want to thank you all for your support seriously from uh, being here with me practically every day we're all holding each other up and this is a time of necessity so the outcome card here says gran consolazione having everything that we've dreamed of desired and hoped for that's what i love about the Sabilas because they really do speak of a story. Let's see what the gods have got to say for 11 11, the 11th of November of 2021, and the energy is moving forward, the day is moving forward. Remember, we've got the full moon eclipse, we're already in those energies. What do the gods have to reiterate? And we've got Hermes and messages, everyone. So the messenger of the gods is here. Hermes. Mercury, which rules. It rules Gemini and it rules Virgo. So messages are coming through. Um, remember, Mercury rules Gemini, so therefore it does have to do with decisions. Mercury right now is transitioning through Scorpio. He is digging deep for truths. We will be communicating things that were hidden. We'll be finding out about ways to change, transform. It is a time of fear. Scorpio is about fears. It's about secrecy. But Hermes, remember, being the trickster, being the intelligent, logical messenger of the gods, he will bring us what it is that we need to know as he connects with um, Hades. He does go into the uh, underworld. So let's read. Hermes is the son of Zeus and the nymph Maya. He is an extremely clever trickster by nature and is known as the divine messenger delivering the messages of Zeus. He is the guide of souls traveling to the underworld and the afterlife, which is the realm of Hades. He wears wings on his hat, heralds, wand and sandals. He is the divine trickster, messenger and god of travelers. Yes, he does rule traveling as well. He also invented the lyre, a musical instrument. 
Here is Hermes. For those of you that don't know what he looks like, here he is with the winged hat, the um, the herald's wand that he holds, and he's got wings on his sandals as well as he's very fast. He goes very fast and he's very neutral. He's not masculine, he's not feminine, or he's both, we could say, as he does travel, uh, it, you know, in between all the realms and visits all gods. He's the messenger. Hermes creates the bridge of communication between the worlds. He is the link between God and man, between the heavens, earth and the underworld. He is known as a trickster, thief, at the gates, watcher in the night and the bringer of dreams. Let me read that again. He is known as a trickster, thief at the gates, watcher in the night and the bringer of dreams. Looks like he's bringing us some messages that will be very much about what we've dreamt of, what we've hoped for. Of all the Greek gods and goddesses, only Hermes, Hades and Persephone have the ability to travel freely in and out of the underworld. Now the message says, Hermes is a trickster and often sends messages in the form of riddles and dreams. When we are tripped up by life and find ourselves on strange and perplexing journeys that unravel the mysteries of life and ourselves, this is Hermes at work. He might steal something from you and as you go to look for it, you may instead discover a whole new world. This is a classic example of how accidents or unpleasant and strange events in our lives can lead us to our destinies. There are countless stories of people finding their true meaning in life after experiencing illness, loss or hitting rock bottom. Oh my God, how on point is this? Messages surround you right now, but they won't be obvious. They will be cryptic and may come in strange ways, but they are there. This is the time to pay close attention and may also be a good time to start a dream journal. If you have been feeling like there is more to life, more to learn and experience, but haven't known what or where to start, be on the lookout for life is offering you opportunities right now, but you need to open your eyes and pay attention. It is likely you will be led in that strange hermetic way through the realm of unveiling mysteries into amazing new worlds of experience, feeling and thought. All you need to do is be open and aware and realize that all possibility is present in every moment. Don't get caught up in how the messages come. Just pay attention when they arrive. So I will leave you with that, everyone. The um, message from the gods was right on point. Pay attention, signs and synchronicities. Remember that when we are in eclipse energies, the veil is very thin. Um, spirit will give you your answers, will bring that opening. Be open. Um, don't get stuck in looking only into the past. Be aware, be open, be present. All right? And I will leave you with that. I want to thank you all so much. Sending you all lots of love, lots of light. Just so you know, the messages for November are on their way. Love you all so much. Ta-da.